guys welcome to or welcome back to our channel if you're returning thank you so much um, for clicking on this video and today we are gonna be wrapping up all of the books that we read in the month of November hey guys welcome to our November overview for what we read in the month of November, we're a tad bit behind just because of everything going on. So I didn't get a chance to record this until now and it's a week into December, but here we go. So I started off November with Britney Spears, The Woman and Me. This feels like I read this so long ago. It's weird to think this was just at the beginning of November it went really fast. It only took me a couple days to read this, but if you guys follow our channel or have watched our videos, you know we did a vlog on this, so you can get all of our thoughts on this one. I'm sure Amanda can tag that video in this. I really enjoyed reading this book. You can see everything that I thought all along the way, and I did have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> and she also won the Goodreads Most Favorite biography and memoir. So congratulations for that. And if you haven't watched the video, I would suggest checking it out. The first book I want to talk about, um, I'm just going to put a picture up here and I will link a vlog up here in the corner is I started Britney Spears's um, autobiography in at the end of October when it came out and then I finished it up beginning of November. So technically I finished that book in November. So I'm just going to throw it in here. We did a full reading vlog on it. You can check that out up here if you want to know our thoughts and feelings on that book. I followed up Brittany. I actually started the next one before Iron Flame came out because Iron Flame came out on I think it was like the 7th. And as much as I wanted to read that as soon as it came out, I had started a book and I'm really bad about, I can't really read two books at once. It's just a quirk of mine. And I know a lot of people read several at once, but I feel like I end up getting too confused about the characters or what's going on. And I really like concentrating and focusing on one story at a time. I know people who even like listen to an audiobook and also be reading books. It's just, it's not me. My concentration just, I, that's not my superpower. So I had started Mr. Lullaby by J.H. Markert. He also wrote The Nightmare Man. And I really was looking forward to starting this. I was lucky enough to get an ARC. It is now out. It's actually out in paperback at Barnes and Noble. I'm not entirely sure where you can get the hardcover. I was so lucky to get this from the publisher. And I really love this book. I did like The Nightmare Man more than this one. I feel like that's going to be the theme for the rest of my November overview and you'll see why. So this one I thought was really well done. I was sucked into the story. I wanted to finish it. That's why I finished it before I started Iron Flame. I def definitely didn't want to DNF this book. And I thought it was very creepy. There was a lot of creepy characters, but I feel like the Nightmare Man, the first one that I read by this author, just was just more terrifying or something. I just felt like more sucked into that story. So this one had a really great premise. It was about a man who comes back from war and his younger brother had been in a coma. There was an accident in this tunnel that you see on the front cover and he's been in a coma. We find out after another character gets out of the coma that those that are in there are a certain number of kids, I think it's all kids, that were in comas and they're being terrorized by someone named Mr. Lullaby. And they're trying to get back to the other side before Mr. Lullaby comes to this side, I guess you can say, um, into the world. So that's the premise and I felt like it was pretty well done. I didn't think it had like any shocking ending or anything that was a huge twist, but I thought it was a really well done story. I think those that read Stephen King would actually really like this book. 
Um, so I did end up giving it four stars and I did enjoy it. So if you were looking for a really creepy novel, if you like The Nightmare Man, I still think you would really love this book too. Um, the next of books I'm going to talk about that I read is obviously Iron Flame. We posted a full reading vlog on Iron Flame because I love this book. I know Jen loved Fourth Wing. Um, I don't think she was as happy with Iron Flame as she was with Fourth Wing, but this is a five book series at this point in time. So we've got three more books coming out. We want to do vlogs on all of them because we just love this book. I gave it five stars. I went back and forth. I wasn't going to, and then I changed my mind because when I first read Iron Flame, I was just an emotional disaster. I was so worried about the characters, what's going to happen to them in general, um, really all of them because that's what this book does to me. But um, I read it and then I was just couldn't stop thinking about the book. I couldn't focus on any other books and I wanted to go back and reread Fourth Wing because there's a lot of foreshadowing in Fourth Wing um, that is told in Iron Flame and I wanted to go back and reread Fourth Wing to sort of wrap my head around more of what's going to happen and come up with some of fun predictions. Um, one of my friends I've been texting with that I read the book, we shared a lot of thoughts and feelings and some predictions about what's going to happen in the third book or further in the series. So I reread Fourth Wing and then went straight back into Iron Flame again. And upon my reread of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame back to back, I gave the book five stars. I just can't help it. I just love the story. I love this setting, the characters, the dragons, everything. It's just the story is everything. I love the the love between Zayden and Violet. Um, I do not want to see them separated or at odds with each other. And in the beginning of this book, Violet's kind of upset with Zayden, doesn't really trust him, and I didn't like that. Um, but the full vlog, I will link up here again. Um, for you guys to go and check that out. So next, of course, was Iron Flame. And we are currently, well, I shouldn't say we, Amanda, I already turned in my portion of what I did for the vlog for Iron Flame. And she is working on editing that right now. She is very excited to be editing this video. So much so that she almost forgot about the December TBR video, which made me laugh because she ha she's just obsessed with this book. And believe me, I loved Fourth Wing. I felt that level of obsession with Fourth Wing. And you'll see our thoughts in Iron Flame. I, I again, in what I said earlier, I really liked Fourth Wing better than this one. I still like this one. It wasn't a huge letdown or anything. It was just, there's a lot in the middle and I feel like it weighs the story down. I just felt like it was going very slow and I never felt like that with Fourth Wing. So I think I was anticipating a similar read with this. I thought it was going to go really fast. I didn't want it to end. Now, part of it was I was slowing myself down because I was very scared that she was going to kill off a favorite character. So part of that was me, but also it just felt like it was getting like repetitive. So you can see our full thoughts and everything that we say about Iron Flame in our Iron Flame vlog. I think that's going to be out before this anyway. So you'll see our thoughts on that. And then on that end, I did get a holiday edition of Fourth Wing. There are two extra chapters in this that are from Zayden's point of view. I also go over those in the Iron Flame vlog, so check that out. I'm sure she can link that into this video. So the next book that I wanna talk about is The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean. I listened to this on audiobook in my car like while I'm driving around running my errands and things. Um, and I will say it's my least favorite Will Dean book so far. I read Firstborn by Will Dean, and that book was was very um, like a traditional thriller. There were twists and turns. There was a murder. There's a mystery to solve, um, and that was just in tra traditional thriller fashion. I enjoyed that book. I think I gave it four stars. And then I read The Last One by Will Dean, and this book was really good. It um, 
the twists, there were twists throughout the whole book. There wasn't just a bunch of twists at the ends. There was twists in the beginning, the middle, the end. Um, it was a very thrilling. It was very easy to picture and understand what's going on. Um, I just felt like that book was amazing. Um, I think I ended up giving it four stars on Goodreads, um, but it is my favorite Wilding book. Um, so I decided, hey, I want to read something else that Wilding has written. I really like this guy. I follow his YouTube channel. Um, he's an amazing writer. So let's see what else he has to offer. And I found an audiobook copy of The Last Thing to Burn. And I didn't know anything about it, which is probably my fault. But I do like going into my books, especially thrillers um, or horror books, not knowing anything really about what's going to happen because I feel like that's the best way to get the full um, intention of the book to get the full feel of the book to get what the author wants to give you um, so I didn't know anything about it um, and what I got when I read it was not really much of a thriller like his other books it is completely fiction um, so there's nothing true about it but it reads kind of like an autobiography of a trafficking victim does broach serious topics in this book that need to have light shed on them such as human trafficking and how it works and the things that happen to the people that are trafficked but um, again the book was just it wasn't what I was expecting I was really wanting a thriller with twists and turns and a murder mystery type thing um, but that didn't happen with this book so if you love Will Dane like I do and you want to read all his books I do recommend you read the book just don't go into it thinking it's going to be like first born or the last one because this book is very different and I'm not sure what was published for I don't know the order of publication I don't know if maybe this is an earlier book that he published and then decided to switch tracks of the things he wanted to put out but um, just know that that book is very different than the others that he's written and then last but not least I had a mystery and when I say mystery I mean we hide it it wasn't necessarily a mystery genre book but we have been on a monthly basis doing a mystery question mark, what book is this read? And we usually theme it out. This one was a book on our TBR that we haven't had a chance to read. And we had to choose whichever one we wanted. We didn't tell each other which one it is and we were going to do a vlog. But November got away from us. And that seems to be the theme of the end of the year. And so I didn't get a chance to do a vlog for that. And I'm not even sure. I don't think Amanda did either. I think she just read hers and kept moving, <laughs> which I can't blame her. Um, so here I did record when I opened my mystery, my mystery pick. So here it is. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do a vlog. I think Amanda has like gone way past <laughs> The surprise TBR read that we were going to do as a vlog. I think we are scrapping it, but I still intend on reading it. I don't think I'm going to read it in the last couple of days of November, but I'm still going to read it since I just finished Iron Flame. More to come on that, but I was going to add this to either the wrap up for November whenever I talk about my pick but I wanted to show what it is. It's supposed to be a book that's been on our TBR that we've wanted to read. And it happens to be one of the nominees for Goodreads in the fiction category. <laughs> and it is Yellow Face. So I've been really wanting to read this. I think it might actually be a quick read. I might even be able to get this done in November. So that's my TBR pick. Let's see what I think. You saw I got Yellow Face by RF Kuang. I've been wanting to read this for a while. A lot of people were recommending it to me because it is fiction, but it's also, I would call this a literary thriller because there's a lot of elements, tense elements, and there is a death in the beginning, but you start to question the main character a lot. And there are questions at least, especially when I read it. I don't want to give too much away, especially if anyone wants to read this. This was voted for Best Fiction for Goodreads Choice Awards. And I had voted for The Wishing Game. And when I said earlier that there's a theme of liking one versus the other, 
Even if I had read both of these before I had voted for the Goodreads Choice Award for Fiction, I still would have went with The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I just love that book to pieces. I thought it was just well done, great characters. I was sucked into that story, very heartfelt. It was just something, especially if you love books when you're younger, that book was just fantastic. I love that book so much. And that those emotions overpowered how I felt about this book. For this one, the emotions that I feel like that come with this one, there are a lot of tongue in cheek, dark humor moments. And I feel like the main character represents, there's the like seedier side of publishing for one and the seedier side of those that really want to succeed in this world and make bad choices and then try and justify those bad choices. And the ending seemed, I don't know, not believable in my opinion. I was talking to, to a friend who had also read this and we were talking about how it didn't really feel believable. But every time I think that, I think of how much I read of true stories that are happening in the world and, and always end up thinking, well, <laughs> Well, it could have, you know, this could have actually happened. I think that the author really got a lot of probably, I'm guessing, it's not like I know. I haven't read or seen any interviews with her. I think I listened to one podcast that she was talking about this, but it really wasn't too detailed regarding her writing of this. But I felt like she probably got a lot off her chest with this because you really see, at least I think this is a true depiction of the publishing world. And especially for any minority in the publishing world, since she is a minority and her main character is a white woman who is stealing a minority's story. So there's that element to it, which is, I, I guess you'd call that meta, but there's so many controversies that happened in that regard. I haven't read any of those books and I'm not as familiar with them, so I don't wanna to speak to them because I really don't feel educated on them. But this one I felt well-written, a lot of dark humor, but the character is just really hard to like and that made it hard at least for me to really want to root for this one, but obviously it won. So there are a lot of people rooting for this one. And that ended my November. The next book that I want to talk about is Jade War by Fonda Lee. This is the second book in the Greenbone Saga. I read Jade City in October and I loved that book. I gave it five stars. I loved it. I love the world. I love the setting. I love the magic. I love the writing. Fonda Lee is a very good writer. Um, I was very disappointed with Untethered Sky, but um, Jade City was phenomenal. Um, then I got to this book and I was expecting to love it even more because in Goodreads, the ratings keep going up. However, I did not really enjoy this book as much. With a title like Jade War, I was expecting lots of action, lots of fighting, like physical war between these clans, um, the magic. I was expecting to learn more about the magic systems and the jade that they wear and the things that can be used for and what it can do and how it harnesses power. Um, but I was just kind of disappointed. There are a few topics in this book that kind of I was like underwhelmed with that she wrote about. Um, there is not really as much fighting and action. This is more of a strategic side of the war, more of the planning. Clan leaders use the media in this book to sort of shape public opinion about them and this war that's going on. Um, but there's really not a lot of actual fighting and war. It's more mental, it's more strategy. And it's more political. Um, so I really didn't enjoy this book as much as Jade City. I know that that's an unpopular opinion because like I said, the ratings in these books keep going up and up, but little disappointed and um, not really what I was wanting or expecting out of the second book in the series. I am going to continue the third and final book of the trilogy, um, Jade Legacy. It is in my December TBR. I do want to finish up this um, trilogy, so I'm going to keep reading. Um, but Jade War was just a little disappointing to me um, in comparison to Jade City.
The next book I want to talk about, I'm just going to pop a picture up here because I borrowed this book from the library and there is a wait list for the book so I didn't get to keep it um, to show you guys for the wrap up video, but it's Starling House by Alex E. Haro. This book was on my most anticipated. I've heard good things about this author. Um, I got on a wait list at my library because I'm trying, I'm trying you guys to not just buy books that I don't know anything about that I don't know if I'll like. And I'm really glad I didn't go out and buy this book because I did not enjoy this book. Um, it was a big disappointment. I had high hopes for it and maybe I set my expectations too high. I thought the premise of the book was, um, was very interesting. Um, if you don't know anything about the book, you're following a woman who is stuck in this um, small town in Kentucky and she is trying so hard to help her brother. Her brother's like 16, 15 or 16. Their mother died and she's been raising him and trying to hide him from child services because she's not technically his legal guardian and they're very poor. They live out of this motel that the mom uh, before she died kind of finagled this woman into letting them stay at so they stay rent free at this hotel she's working all these odd jobs trying to make up money she's saving the money for her brother because he's a genius and he needs to go to this good school but it's very expensive to send him to this private school so she is just doing everything she can to save up money and living day to day so then she comes across this there's a spooky house in this town that is sort of a legend um there's an off spooky author that wrote this horror children's book she's been fascinated with this book since she was little and this house but no one ever seems to be seen going in or out of the house very spooky things happen around the house everyone's scared of it it's like the haunted house on the hill um, and she's walking by it one day and she comes across the owner of the home that lives there ends up offering her a job to work in this house. He's gonna pay her very well and she want, he wants her to clean it and fix it up. And of course she needs the money and she's kind of fixated on the house so she decides to take the job. And the story goes from there. Um, so the premise sounds amazing. I just was not a fan of the writing. I was not a fan of um, some of the commentary in the book. I just honestly should have DNF'd it. I was gonna DNF the book but I was just kind of curious to see how the book was going to be wrapped up and ended because it wasn't clear to me the direction the book was going. So even though I wasn't really enjoying the book, I was curious to see how it ended. So I did finish the book and I should have DNF'd it because forcing myself to finish the book um, kind of put me in a slump where I just didn't want to read. I didn't feel like reading. So I had to struggle with that for a minute. And everyone knows books, book slumps suck like they just suck i wanted to read so bad i wanted to be interested in a book especially coming off of reading amazing book like iron flame and fourth wing and iron flame back to back you know you just want to keep going you want to keep getting books that are going to keep exciting you and feeding into your love of reading but that didn't happen with me and i got stalled a little bit i am currently reading a good book that has got me back into the love of reading and wanting to read it got me out of my slump but i will save that for december wrap up there is one more book that I want to talk about, and that was our mystery November book. So for our November mystery book, we decided to pick a book that had been on our TBR, TBR for a very long time. And this is a book I bought in December of last year. I'm pretty sure I thrifted it. So I bought it either from a library sale or from um, half price books or something. But my mystery pick was... Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Meniscalco. I've been wanting to read this trilogy because she released an adult fantasy book um, that I really want to get to, but the adult fantasy book takes place in the same world as this young adult trilogy. So I wanted to get to these books first and I read this book. I really enjoyed this book. Um, I'm not gonna say I loved it. I'm not gonna say it blew my mind. Nothing like that. But it is a very fun young adult fantasy book. It's kind of a romanticy, a young adult romanticy. Although there's, the book is really more of the telling of how this woman. She is a twin. And she grew up in a witch family. Um, of course, they hide it because witches are hunted. She knows some, you know, I don't want to call them spells, but she knows some 
herbs or concoctions that she can put together to help or hurt people. They keep it very secret. They run a restaurant. The sister, her twin sister ends up getting murdered. She starts suspecting that one of the seven princes, actually some, several of the seven princes of hell in her sister's murder. And she happens to summon one, one night to ask them questions. But this prince of hell that she summons isn't exactly what she expected. And the story goes from there. They start trying to work together to solve this murder of what's going on, not with just her twin sister, but there's been several women that have been murdered. The book ends on a tiny, tiny cliffhanger. I am really interested in getting to the second and third book. They are on my TBR for the month of December because I want to get the trilogy done. But the writing is really good. Uh, it was a very quick read. The book isn't terribly long. It's about 300 pages and the font's pretty big. It's young adult. They do have these fun little uh, drawings in the corner of all the chapters, which I enjoy. I know it's a little thing, but it's fun when you're reading the book and there's little cute stuff in it like that. So we are now a week into December and some of the things that we're working on right now, um, we have our mystery question mark, not a mystery genre thriller but mystery book that's Christmas themed that we're working on. We're doing the most anticipated for January and February. We're doing a Christmas gift episode where she and I will be exchanging gifts. So there's a lot to come. I'm hoping we get to all of it because I'm excited for all of that content, especially the most anticipated. So keep your eyes out for all of those and until next time. <laughs>